Oh, I've seen pictures. Nice to see you. Yeah, great to be on your, your pad. That's pretty yes, cool. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Have you been interviewed on your own pad before? Uh, that's a good question. I don't believe I have. Okay. You're the first person I've ever let in here. Okay, fantastic. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, so UMFRA is all about inspiring people to achieve extraordinary things. So who and what during your life and career has inspired you? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, people you wouldn't know. Uh, very, people, names you wouldn't necessarily know. And you'd be surprised at how few there are. It's a funny thing, one of the great revelations in the, in, in the media industry is, is, is it's made up of so many people, yet so few are exceptional. Yeah. And, so, and, and I suppose that's potentially like any organisation, that, that's why they're exceptional, because if everyone was exceptional, no one would stand out from the yeah. crowd. But there's a guy called Bill Francis, uh, who, was, who was my boss on radio for a long period of time, and anyone in the industry will know that name, and he's okay. widely recognised as being brilliant, and actually a mate of mine, called Dean Buchanan, who currently runs what's called NZME in New Zealand, uh, uh, the radio side of the operation. He's been my mate for years. Turns out he's ultimately my boss now. But, but he's always been inspiring too because we're of a similar age and we came up through the industry of seeing the same things together. And so he's done well for himself. And so, um, so they're two inspirations. Okay, and I just want to talk a bit about your start in the, the media industry. I mean, left school at 16, yes. pretty quickly got a job advertising, yes. copywriting, and then, and then um, after a, a, a DJ was fired, you were on air. So, mm -hmm. you know, why did, what attracted you to media in general? Uh, the, I, I can't remember specifically other than, and I wish I had a better answer, than WKRP in Cincinnati, which was a television, it was a sitcom program about a radio station set in Cincinnati with Dr. Johnny Fever was the main character. And I thought, as I used to watch this program, uh, that looks like a fun job. Yeah. And that's literally, all I can think of why, because I could think of nothing else that I wanted to do, literally nothing else. And it's been my great saving grace in this industry that I've, I've, I've enjoyed everything about it, because I can still think of nothing else that I would rather do. If it all went wrong, wrong tomorrow, I literally have no idea what I would genuinely enjoy doing. Okay, okay. And so I was lucky that I saw a television program. And from that, A, I did enjoy it and have done all right with it. Yeah, absolutely. Weird, eh? Yeah, and what I love about this, it wasn't, it didn't seem highly scripted from reading your story. It was kind of just like you wanted to get into it. And that's that's, literally all, and that's literally all it was. And the, yeah. and the beauty of it, and when I entered it, I had no idea. I wrote three letters to three radio stations, and I said, leaving school, because when I left school, and this is the early 80s, uh, you needed school cert UE, which is your NCEA these days, fifth and sixth form, out the other side. If you had those two qualifications, you could get a job, short of going to university, and you wanted to be a doctor or lawyer, all that sort of stuff. So I didn't, so I wrote to three radio stations, said, what, you know, what can I do, want to be on the radio? They said, you can't be because you're 16, and your voice hasn't developed, all that stuff. So I thought, what can I do? Got a book, careers book. It said copywriting. I thought, what's that? Write some ads, set a test, got a job, boom. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, you went out there and did it. And I'm, I'm curious to know your opinion for in today's environment, because obviously we've got lots of, pe lots of people coming through school who'd love to get on TV or get into radio yeah. or whatever. Um, but it seems like 99% of people these days will go off to a broadcasting school, sit down, learn, yes. learn how to ask questions, and then start doing it. Whereas you just went out there and did it. Yeah, is, I think is it, different, I, it, is, it is very different, and not necessarily, I would argue, better. Okay. Because I left school and got the, the greatest experience you can get, the greatest training you can get, is being inside the industry. And, and when you're in academia, in a, in a, in a lecture theatre, there is no experience. They, they, you know, they've yeah. got studios and you learn tangible things about how to be involved in the industry and what the skills required are and all of that I suppose is reasonable. But there is no substitute for the real thing. And all the people I've seen in the 30 odd years I've been in the industry, I am not sure that really that you learn anything in, in a tech or a university that you can't learn on the job. Mm, mm. And one of the great things you learn very, very quickly about broadcasting is fundamentally, you've either got it or you haven't. Yeah. And no amount of you sitting in a lecture theatre yeah. gives it to you if you don't have it. Just because yeah. you turned up and passed some exams doesn't make you a great broadcaster. Great broadcasters are born and they can be polished with experience okay. and that sort of thing. So although it's changed dramatically, I'm not sure that we're necessarily any better off because of it. Yeah, but it's still possible for people to take the path you didn't just go out and give it a go, you reckon? I don't know that it is. You would okay. need some sort of basic qualification. I don't know that yeah. you could ring up at 16 these days to any radio outlet or media outlet in this country and go, hi, I'm leaving school next month and I'm really keen on radio mm. or newspapers yeah, or television and go, and go, 
how about how about a job? Are they go should, what we want to go to a tech, get some qualifications, sit a few exams, come and see us when you've done that. I, so I don't think you can, and in many respects, I think that's a shame. Okay. And if you have to summarise a few things that you you reckon that that people need to be successful in broadcasting these days, what would you say? Hard work. Hard work. It's all the fundamentals. See, so People get into broadcasting in some respects for the wrong reason, especially television. Yeah. They see bright lights and glamour and all of that crap, and that's all crap. And if you get into anything for the wrong reason, that's a mistake. You've got to get in for the right reasons because you genuinely love it. But the fundamentals of broadcasting are no different from any other business, and they are hard work. Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Yeah. And don't expect to get to the top straight away. And don't expect, what I originally liked about the industry, and it's still true, is it's not like, say, law, where you slowly climb your way up the ladder and, and you can expect after 35 years to be given a gold watch and your partner and all of that. If you're good in broadcasting, you can go up fast. Okay. And that's what I liked about it. It's got that entrepreneurial sort of feel about it. Yeah, yeah. But that still is no substitute for working hard and turning up and learning your trade and when you're asked to do something say yes every time not well I've, you know, I've been here six months and I don't really do that anymore and you do see a lot of that okay. and I don't know why you see a lot of that but you, you do and there's, there's a sense of entitlement among some young people these days that they suddenly deserve it all yeah. and they want to be wherever they want to be whatever that may be mm. and they don't want to do the hard yards so the fundamentals are basic talent and hard work and determination. Okay, so more than anything, is it, is it kind of like a who you, who you know or what you know no, kind of industry? No, no, it's not. It's, it's you will be judged, taken on, fired, uh, by and large, on your abilities. Okay. In that sense, it is not like that at all. It's yeah, not who yeah. you know at all. It's, 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 if you're good, you, you will know. do well, because I suspect, as I said, it's like any other industry these days, good people are hard to find, yeah. and if you're a good person, you will do well. Yeah. And you talk about some of those people who don't do jobs after six months, or yep. whatever, and so on. I mean, you must see so many sort of young whippersnappers coming through, yep. trying to make it big pretty quick. Always. What are some of the mistakes that you see consistently being made? The consistent well? mistake is they don't understand the industry, they might not have a path as to where they want to go. Uh, they're not genuinely driven by passion. Yeah. Uh, you can always, you, you spot them a mile away, you can tell the ones who are going to do well, you can tell the ones who are, who are earnest and interested and dedicated and, and want to make an effort, you can spot them a mile away, good, you know, it's that classic good people are hard to find and when they do come along you can see them. But that sense of entitlement among young people, that sense of I've gone to tech now and I've got my qualification so I'll do a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of the next thing and why aren't I getting promoted, all that sort of thing. So those are your fundamental mistakes, there's, there's no substitute for hard work. Okay, and what would you say is one of the most undervalued qualities of a good journalist? Of a good journalist, a genuine passion uh, without agenda. There's a lot of agendas in the media these days, and okay. so a genuine interest in the world, rightly, wrongly, to understand more. If, if I, I think if I have one thing going for me is that I'm not an expert necessarily in anything at all, but I have an inquiring mind. I'm genuinely interested in a whole bunch of stuff. So I know a whole bunch of stuff, not an expert, but I know little bits and pieces about lots of things. So a good yeah, yeah. general knowledge. What I'm astounded at these days is especially among young people that the, the lack of knowledge of the wider world, yeah. of how it works, whether it's how the government works, who is in government, what the laws of the land are, international affairs, any backstory. One of the greatest things you hear among young people is you go back 10, 15 years and, and you go, so-and-so was running the country. Oh, I wasn't around then, so I don't know anything about that. And I thought, you got, I mean, for God's sake, you, you know, you weren't born, so that's an excuse not to know anything. Yeah. And so there's a, you hear a lot of that, and that stuff surprises me because I would have thought a genuinely inquiring mind is a person who studies, thinks, learns, and wants to absorb all that information. Yeah. You know, as, as, if I wasn't in this industry, I'd still be interested in what's going on in the world. Yeah. The fact that I apply a trade from the stuff I learn happens to be to my advantage. But yeah. I would still know that stuff anyway because I'm okay. genuinely interested. Okay, great. And I, I just want to talk a bit about the, the differences between, you've obviously spent time in television and radio, mm -hmm. but just before we do, I mean, talking about good journalism and so on, I mean, who are some of the journalists and, and people in media in New Zealand at the moment who you think are doing really well and you learn a lot from personally? I like, I like see, I look at the Seven Sharp people. Yeah. Uh, you look at a guy like Michael Holland yeah. and Matt Chisholm, and they're two very good examples, Holland especially. Holland's got, what I like about them is that they, they have a style. And so they, they, they can tell, you know, you can send four journalists in to tell a story. Mm. And a good journalist will, will bring their style to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so you can see 
it's their sort of story. It's, it's the way they've seen it, they told it. And that's a real skill. Okay. And so Michael Holland will deal with people. He's a wonderful people person. He can talk to anybody mm. and make them feel relaxed and make them, because of that, be interesting, more interesting than they might under, uh, under different circumstances. That's a talent. They're people people. That's the, that's the art of good journalism. A lot of people can ask questions. A lot of people can you know, do a bit of digging, a bit of research, all of that sort of thing. That's all fine and well. But, but if you're genuinely interested in people, that often brings out the best in what you're trying to do. So you look at those sort of guys like Holland and, uh, and Matt Chisholm. They're very, very good practitioners yeah. at, at what they do. And how do you go about developing your personal style? Uh, I, I, that's the, I wish I had an answer. I don't, I, I don't know that I have a personal style, and, and, and if I do, I don't know where it came from. I think the greatest trick in broadcasting, just be yourself. Okay. The moment you start trying to be something else or somebody else, uh, you, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. Because what differentiates you out from anybody else is you being you. And so there's a lot of people looking for, for an angle or looking, looking to what should I sound like or what should I look like. Or, and so if you can be you, good or bad, right or wrong, you are what you are. Yeah. And so you're being true to yourself in that sense. And so that would be the greatest trick of all. Okay, great. And I just want to talk a wee bit now about some of the differences in, in types of, of journalism. Um, obviously, you've spent time across shows such as um, Breakfast and mm. Close Up and obviously mm. Seven Sharp Today and News Talk ZV and yep. so on. Um, so having spent your time across television and radio, what are the key differences in presenting television versus radio? Television is a big industry in terms of people. There's way more people involved in doing any sort of television, although that's changed dramatically over the years. The number of people who produce television these days is way smaller than it used to be, but right. nevertheless, it is still a labour-intensive industry compared to radio. I like radio because it's very immediate, very intimate. A lot more relies on you uh, personally, uh, so I enjoy that aspect of it. But um, t television, television's a fun industry. You know, there's a lot of interesting people in it, the technology involved in television. It's probably a more powerful industry in terms of pictures generally beat words in terms of people's attention. If you certainly look at the media, uh, the media on the media, the media writes about television more than they do about radio because yeah. there's something about the so-called glamour of television of which I might point out there is bugger all um, <laughs> that, that, that they seem fixated and fascinated by, but I enjoy both. Yeah. I mean, they're all fun. God, if you can play your trade and you know, make a living doing a bit of this and a bit of that, why wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, so if you're starting out, do you recommend specialising in print, radio, television? I, would, I, I reckon you cannot beat, to be perfectly honest, I, and this is just my personal uh, view. I, I don't think you can beat radio. Okay. I think you can, I mean I do a little bit of writing for the Herald as well and yeah. I enjoy the, the, the art of writing yeah. but that's not something that you can, you can do that in radio, you can do it in television as well. But radio has, has a, radio tests your general individual skills, your communication skills. You can hide a lot in television. Mm -hmm. There's people who will write a script for you, there are people who will light you up and point the camera your way and tell you where to look and how to say it and what to do. So if that's the sort of television you can make, you can actually hide a lot in TV. In radio you can hide virtually nothing okay. because it's you and a microphone in the audience yeah, yeah, yeah. over an extended period of time. Radio shows, two, my, my radio show is two and a half hours long, Seven Sharp's 22 minutes long. Yeah. You know, when you're exposed for two and a half hours every morning, you can do a lot wrong or you can do a lot right and, and people get to know you more, therefore it's a more pleasurable experience and it tests who you are, okay. tests all your skills better. So if I had to go one way or the other, I'd go start in radio, you will learn so much more about life and writing and communication and language and all of those sort of things than you will over any other medium. Okay, brilliant. And just before we head into our quick fire questions to finish off, um, what's, what's next for you and so what's the dream still to come? Next, retirement. Retirement? Because I'm tired <laughs> and I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I don't finish till about 7.30 at night. 3 in the morning. 3 in the morning is when I get up. You've, and, you've been in the first time army gets up the earliest. That's exactly. So, so I get up at 3 and I'm at work at 3.30 in the morning. I do a lot of writing and prep and stuff like that and I get a bit of time off during the day. But um, I, 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 there's, there is no next for me in the okay. sense of, there was never a next in the sense I've never had a career plan. Yeah. And I think that's probably half decent advice yeah. to the extent that the more you set your sights on something really specific, yeah. unless that's your calling in life, yeah, yeah, yeah. then there's a whole world of things that can happen to you that yeah. you don't even think about. Breakfast television, when I started it, Never even thought about it. Never considered it in a million years. Never crossed my mind. Got a phone call one day. They said, we're starting breakfast television. You want to give it a go? And I thought, geez, why not? 
So, so if I'd been hell-bent on something else, I might never have done that. Okay. And that's been my whole career story. A lot of people go, how about that? How about this? How about the next thing? And there's something nice to be said about that. So, I mean, I'm living the dream for God's sake. Yeah. I mean, but what, what, what else is there to do? Yeah, awesome. I'm yeah. loving it. Good stuff. So just to finish off, a few quick fire questions. Um, in summary, I mean, what would you say your top three bits of advice for people wanting to get into this industry? Work hard, be dedicated, and always say yes. Awesome. And the best bit of advice you were ever given? Basically the same thing. Same thing. Work hard, be dedicated, say yes. And if you're given an opportunity, milk it for everything you can. Okay. Because, you know, even even though what I said before is true about, you know, good people being hard to find, being in the door of broadcasting is a privilege. And if you're in it, do everything you possibly can to do the best you can. Yeah. And what's the worst thing about fronting the, the news every day? Um... Or the hanging around, the okay. slowness of it. Yeah. yeah, you know, by the time you get in here and you do a bit of writing, then you shoot a promo, and then you go to makeup, and then you change your clothes, and then you go. To... There's a lot of stuff yeah. goes on before you actually. I like to walk in the door, and this is the beauty of radio. You walk in the door, you sit down, you bang, you go. Yeah. Television's a bit more slow like that because of the number of people involved. So I'm a person who goes, let's go, 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 and so television's a bit slow like that. So I get slightly frustrated at the um, the mechanics yeah. of making, but that's yes, that's first world problems. And is it hard? Like sometimes, so one thing I notice is that when people in media and stuff they share their opinion, whether it's political yep. or otherwise, and then everyone jumps to them. And it's like you can't have an opinion. I'm so because... over. I'm so over that. Doesn't yeah. bother me anymore. And that's and like I, you I, just I, get I, out I, there. I, and, you know, I mean, yeah. well, I'm employed to give opinions. That's what I do. Yeah. And and if you like what I say, brilliant. If you don't like what I say, that's fine too. Doesn't bother me. What's yeah. the point of having opinions if you're going to sit there and go, oh no, somebody doesn't like what I said. If you all you if all you set out to do is, is say something everyone agrees with, you haven't done your job properly, have you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And um, what's what's like one of the funniest things that's ever happened when you've been recording and you just have uh, worst together? worst worst slash fun. Oh, I mean, there's a number, but off the top of my head, the woman who was in the Thompson Twins whose name was Alana, whose second name I can't remember, but the Thompson Twins were a moderately famous group. She's a New Zealander. Okay. And uh, they were a moderately famous group in the 80s, and um, I was interviewing her one night, and she was in Britain, lived in Britain, and knowing that she was from New Zealand, I said in the interview, I said, would you like to say hello to your mum, given we're broadcasting over the country? And she goes, well, no, because uh, my mum sadly did. And so instead of going something like, um, I'm dreadfully sorry to hear that, I didn't realise, I went and said, so that's a no then, is it? <laughs> and so I have no idea why I said that, but that was like unbelievably humiliating for me, but when it went out on air, people found it moderately amusing. So yeah. <laughs> all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, right? cool. And hypothetically, I mean, if you, if you had your time again, is there anything you'd do differently? You no, know? I wouldn't because um, it, it, I, I genuinely believe the way things have unfolded, yeah. they, it, it's, it's been, I mean, I've been fired a couple of times. If, yeah. I could, if I could enter a career and not get fired a couple of times, that's probably good. But, you know, I think it's all part of it's the journey, isn't it? Stuff, it's, yeah. it's the good, the bad, the ups, the downs. I reckon, as far as a ride's concerned, I, I've got nothing to complain about. I've, I've loved every minute, every day, still do. Awesome. And what would the 16-year-old Mike Hosking think of you are today? Uh, I reckon, I would like to think that the 16-year-old would have gone, geez, that worked out pretty well. I'm glad I did it. As yeah. opposed to the 16-year-old going, well, geez, that was a shambles. I wish I'd been a, you know, motorcycle cop or a lawyer or something like that. I, th I think if you looked at that, if I was able to look at that and see where it ends up, I'd be thinking, gee, that's good fun. I'm glad I did that. Good stuff. Any bit of advice you would give him if, if he was here today? Uh, yeah, not, not be such a nerd uh, starting out, not be so earnest. Yeah. I was very, very keen on being grown up really quickly yeah. because the problem with the industry in those days, when you enter at 16, you're desperate to be older than you actually are okay. because everyone else is older than what you are. And so you want to fit in, you want to be part of it, you want to be taken seriously, all of that stuff. But I, I, I just think back in reflection that maybe I might have been a bit nerdy, a bit serious, and if I'd been a bit more relaxed about life, then, you know, it, it, but having said that, geez, I can't complain. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And just last question we finish off, I mean, um, what's something that you believe to be true that no one else agrees with you on? Oh, most people I find agree with me in the end. Once, once, once they work through the logic of my <laughs> argument, I think that uh, I think that most people end up agreeing. And so I, what I t what I tend to do on opinions is there'd be very little I think is true that at least a chunk of people don't because yeah. I, I I've always seen myself as just a regular person with a, a, a dad part of a family yeah. pays a mortgage and so yeah. I see life in that middle New Zealand kind of way and therefore that view's held by a number of people as opposed to the person who holds a view that very few people would agree with is an extremist yeah, yeah. and I'm not an extremist okay
awesome. So to finish off, uh, Mike, can you look down this camera here sure. and tell us what are your wise words for the people of New Zealand? New Zealand or broadcasters? New Zealand in general. New Zealand. People. My wise words for the people of this country uh, are to spend, if you're one of them, to spend less time worrying about what's going wrong and who hasn't done something right and to enjoy this place and realise that we live in one of the great countries of the world and things are going fantastically well at the moment and they have for the last half, half dozen or so years and there are golden opportunities for each and every one of us if you want them and if you want them, go out and get them. Brilliant, nice to see you.